Good morning, everyone. I am excited that very soon we will be meeting face to face. I don't think we will stop talking, will we? But until then, we've got online. With only six months of 2020 gone, already people are labelling this year the year of the... I heard a discussion this last week and somebody called it the year of the interruption. Undoubtedly, COVID-19 has interrupted all of our lives. And the nature of an interruption is that we say something like, I didn't see it coming. Certainly, I didn't see it that professional sports people would be playing to empty stadiums. I didn't see it coming that children would be off school for months. I didn't see it that churches would be closed down. And I didn't see it that congregational singing will be restricted even though we are in Wales, the land of song. But we have to face the fact that interruptions are part of our life and affect our every day. We may look as an interruption, as an irritation, a nuisance, something that annoys us. A noise can interrupt our train of thought. A knock on the door can disturb us for that moment. Sometimes something will unexpectedly break down and that interruption will affect your day ahead. However, some interruptions are very welcome and at times it brings us good news and we embrace the interruptions. But how we react to the interruption will determine and affect our day for good or not. And I want to look for a few minutes at a life that we read, that a life that was interrupted when we read it in the Bible, and his name was Saul. Saul, who later became Paul. Just have a listen here. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He wasn't in a good tune. He went out to the high priest and asked him for letters to go to Damascus so that he could arrest those Christians who belonged to Jesus. And as he neared Damascus on his journey, here's the interruption. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Here we had a man, a young man, who had a plan for his life. He had a purpose, and that purpose at this time was to persecute the Christians. You see, here was a young man who was anti-Jesus. He was angry with God. And he certainly, as we read, didn't like the disciples. But you see, on the road, on a journey, from Jerusalem to Damascus, an interruption came that transformed his life forever. A light from heaven and Saul, why are you persecuting me? It was a dramatic change. The interruption was dramatic, but from being a person who hated the Christians, he became a follower of Jesus throughout his life. 
You see, it's Jesus life was interrupted. Jesus was walking along a road one day and he was interrupted by a man up a tree. And he's looked at him and he said, of course, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm coming to your house for tea. Another occasion, Jesus was by the Sea of Galilee and a man pushed his way and interrupted the conversation Jesus was having. And he said, here, my little girl. You see, interruptions never hindered or upset Jesus. Interruptions, we have to face the fact that can lead to us facing difficulties. COVID-19, we have had to face difficulties that we never saw coming. Nationally, economically, family-wise, and even on a personal level, interruptions to our life. But if you are having an interruption in your life at the moment that you are finding difficult, something you never saw coming, can I encourage you? God is there to help you. He is never distant. He is there close by you, looking after you. I was amazed that the word help is in the Bible 150 times. We say in the Psalms, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Another time it says God is our refuge and strength in times of need. And he's a present help, help when we need him. Another psalm says, cry out for help to the maker of heaven and earth. You see, God wants to be with you in whatever interruption you are facing in your life at this moment. Interruptions, though, can be a blessing. We may not think it at the time, but the interruptions can be a divine opportunity to step in to your life. Saul, although he didn't know it at the time, it was a divine appointment to change his life completely for the good. You see, we can speak words of wisdom, kind words, we can speak words of grace to people who it may seem have interrupted our life and interrupted our day, but we are there perhaps to be a listening ear for them. It may be a divine opportunity for you and me to show Jesus and speak Jesus into situations. Some interruptions do come from God. They're opportunities. And sometimes he interrupts our life because let's be honest, we can sometimes live a self-orientated life where our life is just taken up with ourselves and our things and my family and my, and we could go on. But interruptions, sometimes God needs to get our attention for us to hear his word to us at a specific time in our life. Sometimes an interruption will redirect us. Certainly did Saul. Sometimes an interruption can refresh us, can refocus our life. But certainly an interruption can draw us closer to the Saviour. Some interruptions we have to face and realise the fact that can draw us away from our walk with God. You see, I don't know about you, but as soon as I start to pray, I get interrupted. My mind goes 60 to a dozen. I hear something, I go and have to check it out. The evil one wants to make sure that you do not have a prayer life. Because it is the prayers 
life of you and me that can transform, change our situation and the folk around us and even our nation. You see, some interruptions. You, you read your Bible or, or you go to worship or whether it's online or we'll soon be back into a you know, person-to-person -person church. Uh, often interruptions come on a Sunday when he doesn't want you to hear some thing from the God's word that he has for you. I don't know what interruptions or where you are at the moment in life. But I just want to finish by saying this. Draw close to God. Whatever you're going, he is there for you. He knows what you're going through. He cares and he loves you deeply. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, draw near to us this Sunday. Draw near to us, Lord, that we will walk closer to you day by day. Indeed, this is the day the Lord has made. And help us, Lord, to rejoice in it and be glad. And I just pray the presence of God for everyone who is listening to uh, this online moment that, Lord, you will reach into their home, reach into their situation, reach into their family and anoint them and touch them for the days that lie ahead. And everyone said, Amen.